Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 2, Section 8 in McDougal Itell's 8th grade textbook entitled The Coordinate Plane. We start with three definitions today. The first definition is the definition of the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane is formed by the intersection of a horizontal and vertical number line called the X and Y axis. The coordinate plane is formed by the intersection of a horizontal and vertical number line called the X and Y axis. The second definition is the definition of origin. That's the location on the coordinate plane. And you can see I've abbreviated coordinate plane as CP, so you don't just don't have to write all that out as many times. Location on the coordinate plane where the X and Y axis meet. The location on the coordinate plane where the x and y axis meet. And finally, the definition of quadrants. Quadrants are defined as the division of the coordinate plane into sections formed by the x and y axis. The division of the coordinate plane into sections formed by the x and y axis. All right, in the next column we have all the real essential information here for talking about the coordinate plane. When we're dealing with the coordinate plane, usually what we're going to be doing is plotting what we call ordered pairs. Ordered pairs represent some number on that x axis and some number on the y axis. As you can see from the ordered pair on the board, the first number is the x number, and the second number is always the y number. Yes, they have to be written in that order. At the bottom of that column, we currently have a blank coordinate plane. We need to be able to fill in all the parts on that coordinate plane because, most importantly to you, it's a test or a quiz question tomorrow. I'm going to give you a blank coordinate plane and say fill in all the essential parts. So let's take a minute and fill in those essential parts. I already said and gestured that the axis going across is called the x-axis. Okay. Positive numbers on the x-axis go over here. And if that number in the ordered pair happens to be negative like that one, then that's going to go over here on the negative x-axis. We also, of course, have a positive and negative y-axis. Positive on the y is going to be up. Negative on the y is going to be down. OK, there are some other points or other parts of the coordinate plane that have to be labeled, though. Okay, the second definition over there was the definition of the origin. That's where the two crossbars meet. So that's going to simply be this point right here, dead center, is the origin. And then, question? Yeah. Is this stuff going to be on the quiz tomorrow? Yes. The review guide will go in next week's. Okay, so you get to use your notes on quizzes. Oh, okay. So you don't need a review guide right for tomorrow. Yes. No, you get to use your review guides on finals. You get to use your full notes on quizzes. Okay. Assuming you don't have any dots. But thank you for asking. All right, let's finish this up. Third definition over there was the definition of quadrants. Okay. The coordinate plane is divided into four quadrants, the upper right, the upper left, the lower left, and the lower right. Each of those has a corresponding number, and I'm kind of hoping you remember this from last year. They get Roman numerals. So quadrant one is the main quadrant, that's this one up here. And this is the part that will probably mess you up if anything messes you up here. 
The numbers don't go clockwise like you would expect. The numbers go counterclockwise. So quadrant two is this section over here. Quadrant three is this one down here. And quadrant four is this one over here. And the primary use of the quadrants is simply to identify where something is. Okay, for instance, if I gave you a point and said it was down here, you would just tell me it's in quadrant four. That's the primary use of quadrants, just as an identifier. Okay, so let's go into our first unnumbered example there. And we're asked simply to name the points. And when I say name the points, what I really mean is just give me the ordered pair that goes with it. So, for instance, point A, well, you can see point A happens to be dead center here. So point A, I didn't have to go right or left, so that's going to be a zero. And I also didn't have to go up or down, so that's also a zero. So point A is at zero comma zero. As far as point B goes, okay, point B, again, we always start at the origin, which I'm hoping is back to remember from last year. We had to go one, two, three, four, five spaces over to the right. And as you know from what we just did, that's the positive x-axis. So that first number is going to be a five. But we didn't have to go up or down to get to it, so the second number will be a zero. Point C. Point C. First of all, we didn't have to go right or left to get to it, so that first number is going to be a zero. And for the second thing, we went down four spaces, and we know that's negative territory from what we did over here, so negative four. Okay, so try point D for, for me. First of all, right or left.